Hi, my name is Daniel Marks. I, I thought I would reintroduce myself despite having hundreds of videos on this channel because I feel like a lot of people might come to this video simply because of the topic and not because they're interested in following me as a booktuber or an author. I wrote that book right there, Velveteen. Um, but I think this one, I, I have to sort of rely on my past experience. And I was a psychotherapist for 12 years, working with children and adolescents and their families, and dealing with a number of issues and symptoms and diagnoses and lots of different things going on and crisis stuff and things like that. When I mentioned in my last video that I was going to discuss depression, there were quite a few people who said that they had been struggling with it as well and would be interested in hearing someone talk about it sort of openly. And so I thought I would talk about my depression specifically because I think for each person it's different and yet somehow the same because it's, it's like a lot of symptoms that tend to be really connected to the same thing, which is just sort of this general kind of an empty feeling. For me, I mean, I, I do certain things. I, I'll, I'll know that I'm getting more and more depressed as I tend to just be eating without thinking. Sometimes there's just not enough food to fill the hole. And I mean that sort of hole being like that sadness kind of a thing. I, I, I think a lot of people get that. People who have been diagnosed with depression have a tendency to get that more often and have to be really cognizant that it's happening. The other thing, and I know this about myself, is that my mood is really sort of wrapped up in expectations. I have a tendency to set really high expectations for myself, for other people, for situations, for events, things like that. And because of doing that, I really set myself up for a lot of disappointment, which in turn makes that empty hole bigger. It's, it's a cycle that gets really, really nasty, and I have to be very present in sort of my self-assessment at all times to kind of combat it. Because regardless of whether I do believe creativity and depression have a link, and I do believe that, and I think that research has shown that that is the truth, and you could name tons of individuals, Van Gogh, Hemingway, Vonnegut, Poe, who have just been um, clearly depressed, and it's been diagnosed. Van Gogh himself was actively seeking treatment and put himself in the hospital for a time, regardless of whether he ended up killing himself. I'm not going to say a lot of depressed people end up committing suicide, but I think that you end up doing lots of things that are generally unhealthy for you. Um, you find a lot of writers are alcoholics and or turn to alcohol because it's it's sort of a medicating thing. You, you self-medicate when you don't necessarily want to go to the doctor or own up to your mental health stuff. Whatever. I mean, that's, that's sort of the case with lots of people. There's no judgments here. If, if that's where you're at, then that's where you're at. But regardless of whether that's an actual link, uh, I don't believe that creativity will be torn somehow out of your head if you get treatment for your issues. That's sort of magical thinking to think that creativity stems from illness. It's just, I don't believe there's any correlation there. I think that there is something to be said about high doses of medication sort of dulling the senses to the point where it'll be difficult to be creative. But we've gotten to a point now with medication that lower doses are being found to be just as helpful. So it's more of an excuse that I'm not willing to agree with. For me, I think that I live in sort of a sub-depressed state for a lot of the times. I, I'm typically up, and in social situations, I'm very kind of outgoing, I think. But for the most part, when I'm sort of alone or thinking about um, sort of my successes, and when I never really feel like I'm successful at anything, number one. I never feel like that. And so when people bring up stuff, about like how is how is Velveteen doing for one. I always have a tendency, I, I really want to fall back to a lie, which is just to say, yeah, it's going fine or whatever, when I don't ever feel like it's going fine. My depression is as such that I can't be convinced that it is going fine. I just can't. And so that impacts my writing. I dwell on all these expectations. I want things to be good. I want it to be like outstanding. And then I have setbacks and then it, it sort of makes that hole open up and then I can just drop right in it. That's sort of the best way I can describe my personal depression. Um, I was diagnosed back in the early 90s. I have been on medication in the past, um, but that's for more of the really grander expressions of the 
of the mental illness. I was at my worst depressed state. I, I really, I couldn't even drag myself out of bed. I would sit for hours in my rope, just like staring at walls. It was not good. It wasn't, it was horrible. And I could really isolate sort of the elements of expectations that were not met at that time as being the contributing factor to that. I had just gone through a lot of education around being a psychotherapist. And I, I really, you know, despite despite the, the shit talk that I do about psychotherapy and, and being a psychotherapist and how horrible it was, I was really good at it, I have to say. And I, sort of the feeling that I could not get out of it what I wanted to get out of it really sort of opened that hole up. And it opened it up in a really big way in the early 90s. And I went on Paxil, and that was very helpful. I'm certainly not anti-medication. I think that you you do what you need to do for specific times in your life. I don't think that right now I, it's necessary for me to have medication. I think that there are other ways that I can deal with my depression in terms of how I live my daily life. It's not affecting my daily life as much as it did back in the 90s. So I do things like I exercise. I do a lot of walking. I, I jog occasionally. I do things that I enjoy doing. I cook. I cook a lot. That's something that I take a lot of pleasure from. And so those things really help to close up the hole, if you know what I mean. But how it really intersects with my writing is in terms of the mood. I could never, for instance, write a very happy story. I mean, that is something that I don't really feel a connection to. My stories will always have a very grim, dark layer to them that I, I mean, I can't. There's always, in every single story, there's a hole. There is a hole in the story. It's like, you know, the characters could easily drop in at any minute. And there's a, there's a level to how they see the world that comes from a very dark place, as if they're looking out of the bottom of that hole. That's just how it is for me. And I think that if I tried to be different than that, and I have tried to be different than that, my expectations are never met. Um, and so that becomes even more difficult for me and, and really increases the chance that I could get back to that place where I would need medication again. So I just need to have a sort of an acceptance of where I'm at, understand where I'm at, know exactly how wide open that hole is or how tight it is. I, I'd say it's 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 open, but it's not a big, vast crevasse or it's not a never-ending chasm at this point. I mean, it's it's there. It's always there. And I just need to be able to sort of set realistic goals for myself and set realistic goals for my writing. And that's, I think, all you can do. So I'll do things like writing sprints. I'll have to push through those times where I'm so moody that I don't want to write or I don't feel like it's worth it because it, I don't think that the books will ever be successful. So why bother? Um, I mean, that's one of my big struggles is that when I sit down to write, it's like I can, I can start to get into a pattern and then I'll be like, oh, you know, what's the point? What's the point of it all? You know, I, I have this, I got this feeling like late last year, like about a month after the book came out, that if I wasn't a lead title, that there was no sense in even doing it because I would never get the kind of promotion that I needed to get out of the books. And so that was just like, nah, the, the hole was like ready for me to dive into. And I had to like sort of, you know, knock myself in the head and come back to it. And like get back to the work and so yeah there's that so leave me a comment of whether this was helpful for you because it is hard to tell whether my story will necessarily equate to you but I guess the point of the whole thing is that to sort of be a functioning person you can't do it sort of blindly you have to really take a, a realistic true look at how you're doing and do that a lot just make sure, check in with yourself quite a bit to make sure that you're doing well and that if you could be doing better and then what kind of things could you do to be doing better? That kind of thing. I'll also leave some links in the down bar to some resources for how you could get some help if you needed some help and go from there. In the meantime, I'll just keep writing. I'll just keep plugging away at it and doing all those things, my sort of battle plan to avoid dropping into the hole. And that's all you can do, right?